two more than the score and Tony Moclair, joined by Troy Zantuck, football walking almanac and football nut and man of many talents. Uh, we, uh, Troy, last week, we, uh, I think we did a fantastic interview with Rene Kink and uh, so much material was unearthed. We've got time for another instalment. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to uh, part two of the Rene Kink interview, Tone. An absolute gold mine of footy facts. And Rene, he's not backward in coming forward. I love the way he operates. So really looking forward to this episode. Is there a current day player going around who reminds you of a young Rene King? Uh, probably Petrarca a little bit. Yep. Uh, Petrarca's got the body. He's, he's got the size. He, he's, he's got the smarts. He's got the skill. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's played with Melbourne. It's not helping his cause. Uh, but, but I like uh, like what he what he does and what, what he and he can improve so much more. But but that's also helping Melbourne has to improve so much more to help him because he is a, a, a good driving force. Um, yeah, I like Petrarca probably. Who, who would you think, Tony? Oh, geez, that's a good question. Um, uh, I really have no idea. I uh, I think you're incomparable. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, 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 you, know, you look at players now. You know, I love Cripps as a player. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I love Dangerfield. And I, lo- and I love uh, the guy, uh, the captain of um, uh, the Dockers. Um, five. Yeah, five. 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 He's terrific. Five. Yeah. Yeah, because those guys, you know, what they can do, they can do just about everything. You know? And what I love about Dangerfield is is explosiveness. And these guys also, the players I'm talking about, they're thinkers. And that's what I love about uh, footballers. You know, where Mitch Robertson is not necessarily a thinker, uh, but he's a doer. If you know what I'm saying? There's yeah, the difference. Yeah. You know, he just grinds it and hard work and he just wants to bash and crash. And, and, and I love that about him. You know, he's really, really become one of my favourites. And I think you can throw Bontempelli in there too, Renee. Oh, of course you can. Of course you can. Bontempelli's terrific, and he can only get better too. I really think he can. And Footscray, you know, they're, they're, they're there on the cusp, but can they just get that next turn in the circle to, to be a top two or three side coming the end of the year? Now, Tony wanted me to throw in the year 1979, Renee. <laughs> now, I, I believe Carlton may have won that premiership. But 1979, a tremendous year for you personally. You played 25 games that year and slotted through 54 goals. So that's a, that's a great return, 25 games in a year, and um, you've kicked over the half century. Well, we played in the grand final, uh, and I think I played one of my uh, finals uh, in the middle um, on the ball, which I would have loved to have played on the ball. But unfortunately, Tommy needed me down on the forward line because more often than not, I played centre forward, I played half forward flank, I played full forward. Because if Carmen was down, as as you may remember, guys, um, on two occasions it was it was uh, Kekovic, Kent, Carmen. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and Kicker was a broken down soldier, and Carmen just used to run off anywhere he wanted to when he wanted to. And time and time again, I played centre forward at six foot one, which which the contesting part of it was great, but, I mean, to be able to mark against the Peter Knights and the Jack Hawkins of Geelong and, and so on and so forth, that, that was a tough gig for me. Uh, so, therefore, I used to use uh, a lot of the other stuff, which was a bit of the you know, crunch and, 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 and so on. And in 1979, was it the year that I gave an average of four free kicks away per game? Okay. I think it was. Uh, and I also got reported that year, didn't I? Yeah, you, uh, you, you were uh, up at, uh, at uh, VFL House on a few occasions. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I came seventh in the Brownlow that year too. Wow. I tell you what, you know, you know your stats, mate. <laughs> right. we, we won't argue with you there. Who were you? Who was your opponent in the '79 GF, Renee? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Uh, Robert Clomp was it? Oh, okay. Clompy and might have been. Peter yep. McConville was yep. down there as well. Yep. Yeah, look, you know, they, they were always hard to play on. But Carlton, as I always say to people, Carlton had 22 of their 22 players. They had 18 that were pretty damn handy, 19. Yep. 
we're coming in. We had 15 or 16, 14 players that were pretty damn good, and the rest, well, you know, it made up the numbers. And the little bit of difference between Carlton and Collingwood in those days was they just had that little bit of a finishing touch with the those players that made the difference, um, as in the, the 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 last five or six or seven players that weren't as good. They were better than ours. Yeah. And to think that Alex Markell is a three-time Premiership player and a Hall of Famer, you got to love uh, the bloke. Uh, yeah. You know, but that's the yeah. truth. Yeah, that's, that's what Premierships do to people. Uh, well, yeah, and uh, and a brilliant after dinner speaker as well, I might add. Uh, but anyway, that's that's my bias coming through. Um, we we have to we have to talk about a ball being tapped back into play. Your thoughts on that? I know you've been asked a million times, Rene, but but I'm but I'm very keen to know. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, and I can only say from what you guys can see, and that's the boundary line and the vision of it, and it clearly shows me that the ball was over. So. You know, who wants to argue about that? Carlton, Carlton people do, but exactly uh, everyone else, everyone else, everyone else who, uh, who sees that, uh, I firmly believe um, the ball was was over the boundary line. Did it decide the game, as far as you were concerned? That that one moment? Oh no, but it, it, it won the game for them because he, he knocked it back in. Uh, what's the name? Grabbed the ball. Um, um, uh, Kenny Sheldon. Finished Kenny Sheldon. Um, there was no one around him. Why? I think Magro was on him for some reason, but wasn't on him. He had all the time in the world. Uh, it was a great knockback over the boundary line because I believe the way he dived and, and hit the ball, the ball was just over the boundary line, and the rest is history. Now, I know you're huge on your stats, Renee. You picked me up with uh, that 143 stat um, as a young bloke at Ararat, but... Um, the best game you played, take you back to round six, 1980 at Victoria Park. You slotted through seven goals against the Saints. Memories yeah. of that game? Yeah, I do. We, um, we, we, uh, it was a record score or something. And, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, it was, it was, I think I either played on Jimmy. It was, uh, I'm not sure if I played, could have played on uh, Grant Thomas or, um, um, yeah, I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, look, that was a day out where the ball came into the forward line time after time, and and if anything, I had more fun than kicking the seven goals by just grabbing the ball and giving it off to whoever was near me, and and uh, yeah, part of it was seven goals, but I didn't sort of look upon it as you know something special. It was just we beat them by a hundred points or more. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just one of those games that. Uh, you don't go, oh, geez, I was fantastic because it was just a game that was to be won. We won it, uh, and everyone played unbelievably well. But no doubt after, after kicking seven, Renee, uh, the Collingwood Social Club would have been rocking. You would have been king of the castle. Yeah, I don't know which girl was up there waiting for me that night, but uh, it was... <laughs> <laughs> That's Tony knows about. He, he knows all about that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Tony. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's talk. Younger, Dave. All right. That, yeah, this no, is the uh, shield section of uh, more than the score. <laughs> I, uh, can, we, can we just fast forward from that St Kilda game, Collingwood game at Victoria Park? Let's go to your first game playing for St Kilda against your old club at Victoria Park. What was that like? Uh, was I in the seniors? Okay. Yes. Okay. I was. I believe so. Yeah, Troy. Does okay. that count? Um... Well, there's not a lot, Tony. There's not a lot to remember about my seven games at St Kilda. I can assure you. And if it was, uh, was yeah. Look, I vaguely, um, yeah, I did, I did play in that game, if I do recall. Um, uh, yeah, look, they treated me nicely. The Collingwood people, they treated yeah. me okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, I shouldn't have been in there. The game, I, as I, I went to St Kilda with a view of maybe I'm playing 15 or 16 games for the year. And I just remember the uh, the pre-season training over there on those big parks, and we we're doing that sort of fart leg work where you run, sprint, run, sprint. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you know, there's 60 or 70 or 80 guys because at that time people got invited to come down and train. And I remember the whistle going and I'd take off and, oh, I look, I look like a, a Olympic sprinter. 
and all of a sudden you get to the end of the 40 or 50 metres and they're just going past me, zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> I look around, I'm, I'm third last again. <laughs> I'm saying to myself, this is not going to be good for me this year. Yeah. And I got seven games, but it was the wettest winter I ever remember in football. Um, it was just it was just a shocking year. And he used to make us train and run up to um, the, the um, Sandringham ground. And so I thought, this is not good for me. So I'd always be late to come out of the rooms. They'd be going up South Road. I'd be getting in the car and driving up to the ground. So I'd get around the back of the ground, park the car, and I'd sort of sneak into those tea trees and watch them all come in. So once they come in, of course, I've thrown a bit of water over the face. You've got the water bottle in the car. Yeah. And of course, I've just jogged in right at the end, just as they've got through the door, and, and fantastic. And of course, we ended up training there in Sandy Ground. It was beautiful. And then after the training, I had to teach some of the young boys how to kick goals and, and you know, how to kick left foot and right foot. And, and of course, while and truly, they're through the ground at the gate, tra- uh, jogging back to um, St Kilda. And of course, I'd get out last minute into the car and straight home. <laughs> it, worked, it worked every week. It never failed. Uh, that's, that's what 10 years of the experience does, Renee. You, you knew all the tricks, mate. Yeah, that's right. But look, Secure Kilda was, was a club that had been in a lot of turmoil, had a lot of issues. And, um, you know, as I, got, I got down there and played seven games. And I was I was so happy to walk out of the, out of the ground that, at 29 years of age, and say, so leave me alone. There was some talk about me going to the Brisbane Brisbane Bears to play. And, you know, they tried to build that up in the paper and so on. They all rang me to try and ask me questions, but I just took no 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 phone calls, and uh, they all dropped off eventually. So I liked that. That was good. Just in regard, Renee, to your uh, transition from Collingwood to Essendon, how did that all eventuate? Uh, going into Essendon was interesting. Uh, my time up at Victoria was up. Um, once again, Tomo, I, I didn't train that summer at all. Uh, didn't do a damn thing. I was I was just so over football. I didn't even really want to play. And and John Carlin came in, and uh, and John was lovely. And his big catch cry, which was amazing for a guy that had won six or seven premierships in Port Adelaide, yeah. he used to say, "Hit the ball hard," and that was his catch cry. I think, "Hit the ball hard." What's he talking about? What do you think I do when I go out there? I'm going to hit the player hard before I hit the ball hard. That's one of my yeah. days. And, uh, and I remember one night uh, uh, Tom, Tom o grabbed me. He was chairman of selectors. And he said, look, why don't you go for a run, run up the uh, boulevard like we used to with Tommy yeah. up to you and all that. Yeah. And I said, yeah, no worries. <laughs> I went straight inside, got me back and went straight home. <laughs> I said, you're going to be kidding, aren't you? My age, you want me to go to the boulevard? That is the sort of into the season we started, and uh, and then um, oh, they sort of grabbed me and, and said, "You really don't want to be here, do you?" And I said, "No, I don't." I said, "My time's up here." And uh, and then uh, uh, Peter, Jess, and others sort of put the uh, feelers out. Uh, Carlton were very keen. I had a good meeting with Carlton, but uh, it wasn't well. When I say a good meeting, it, yeah, it was a meeting that we had that didn't come to anything, and uh, but. Essendon were very, very keen, and, and um, that's how I ended up there. They were very keen. Shetty was very keen to get me. And, of course, I went out and did a bit of uh, hard training very quickly, uh, morning and night, uh, with Peter, um, what's his name, Deslin, the uh, phys ed guy. I ran the uh, tan and ran around Carlton in the mornings and really got fit very quickly. And then I played in the 83 grand final, and the rest is history. Uh we got thrashed, and then uh, the following year, I, I, I had some really bad knees. I played a couple of games in the seconds. And then um, the final year, the third year, I played 14 games um, and then had a bit of a fall out with Shetty just before the finals. That was, uh, it. Uh, that was going to be my question. How quickly did it deteriorate with Shetty, and what was the genesis of that, Rene? Oh, look, the genesis of that was really... Uh, my disappointment with Sheedy is he didn't talk to me at all whilst I was at Essendon. Uh, there was no one-on-one conversations. There was no, uh, no 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 stuff that I really felt that I needed and should have shown the respect for a person who played in five grand finals. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in the end, it sort of just uh, broke down. Um, 
words were said, and uh, I left three weeks before the final. Uh, yeah, and, and that was it. And uh, there was a few things in the paper which weren't quite right. Um, and to this day, that's how it's ever it's always been. It's, it's never changed. And, and I spoke to Sheedy now. Uh, I've been two metres away from him. He knows he shouldn't talk to me, and he knows I know I want to talk to him. So, you know, look, you saw what he did to Derek Higgins. Yeah, well, I, I think they eventually reconciled, but it only took the best part of two decades, I think. Yeah, I don't even think it's even fully closed yet. I don't think it's uh, okay. it should be. Okay. Yeah. No, but um, look, um, yeah, I'm not in a bag, Kevin Sheedy. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a great coach and he's proven that. He, he was a great player. But, uh, you know, a one on one situation, you can't get on with everybody. And, and that's how it was with, with you know, him and I. Yeah. Just uh, changing tack just a tad there, Remain. Uh, if I mention the names Jack Thompson, Graham Kennedy, Frank Wilson, John Howard, and Bruce Beresford, and Tank O'Donoghue. Oh, How good was Tank? He was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> he was a mean bastard, wasn't he? Hey, what a great movie. What great people. Jack Thompson, what a, what a fantastic person he was. And, and that was 1979 we did that. So I was around 19, 20 years of age. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was great. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got a copy, but my girlfriend's got a copy. We watched it the other week, and they were sitting, we're all sitting there watching it. They're all noisy. And, oh, did I go off? I said, give me, a bit of, give me a bit of fame for five minutes, please. I haven't seen this for twenty years. But uh, yeah, that was great. I got I got royalties from that for six years. Why? <laughs> For six years, it was through the South Australian Film Corporation. I was only one of – Tommy and I are only two that signed actors' equity contracts. Yeah. And um, I remember I got three checks a year, and I remember <laughs> the last check I got was $37. And you read it, I couldn't right. get I ran into the bank as quick as I could to cash it because I needed the money that desperately. Thirty-seven dollars. <laughs> kicking myself to this day because I would have loved to have put it into a, a frame and given it to Collingwood to put it into their museum eventually, and put a little story about uh, the check and Renee Kink and Tanko Donahue and everything. It would have been great. You were worth every dollar, Renee. You know, thirty-seven dollars. Geez, I needed that badly. Probably on Did you? Have- did you ever have an acceptance speech for the Oscars ready? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we have? What do we, we don't have the Logies in, in Australia, do we? have that, uh, what do we have, what do I call uh, the, uh, the AFIs. The AFIs, yeah, I was waiting for an invitation, never came, but uh, <laughs> no, um, that, that was great. And uh, Harold Hopkins and John Howard and Graham, Graham Kennedy was great. He used to come down in his gold Rolls Royce. Yeah. yeah. He used to be at the Southern Cross when that was still going, of course. And uh, yeah, Graham spent time with us and spoke. But once his his gig was finished for that afternoon and morning, off he'd go. And, and Jack just loved hanging around the boys and hearing all the stories and getting involved. And yeah, he was great. And of course, you know, it's it's become an icon movie that, as we know, yeah, Australian yeah, icon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if I go down. If I go down in flames, at least I've got that legacy to leave. <laughs> you, can't, you can't leave seven losing grand finals, can you? Mate, it's up there with The Castle as my, as my uh, favourite Australian movie. Well, there you go. Oh, Bra- uh, what was the other one? What's that? The Castle and uh, the other one was Break, uh, Break a Moran. Uh, that was yeah. a great yeah. Australian movie. So, yeah, uh, Bruce Beresford was was fantastic. Um and of course, he's he's a great Australian uh, playwright uh, and director. Uh, not uh, not uh, Bruce Beresford. Uh, who was the guy that wrote it? Um, John Williamson. John Williamson. Yeah, great Australian playwright. Oh, written, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so no one can take that away from me at least. <laughs> take the grand finals from me. You. Well, Rena, you've been very very generous. With your time, I'll try some final question uh, before we uh, before we let you go. 
you, as I say, you've been extremely generous with your time and your reminiscences, and it's been an absolute delight. Troy, uh, anything else that you're burning to ask the great man, Rene King? Oh, I think we've covered off Rene's magnificent football career, but I really wanted to cover off on his acting career, so I'm glad I got that in at the end there, Tay. <laughs> yes, thank well, you, man. Uh, Reno, we can't thank you enough. Um, either on the field or in front of the camera, um, you always left an impression and uh, you've more than exceeded any expectation I had uh, this afternoon to speak to you. It's been a real pleasure, a real privilege, and I've enjoyed every moment of it, as have uh, anybody watching, I'm sure. So thank you so much for your time, Reno. It's been a delight. Brilliant, Tony. Thank you, Troy, and uh, we'll catch up again soon. What a great look back on Renee King's football career, but... We've got his boxing career coming right up. Some great tales, great stories of what Renee went through, both as a boxer and as a presenter. Renee Kink, boxing coming up.